AI seems to not be slowing down anytime soon and it seems like it's almost replaced yet another job. It seems like there are new large language models, video models, audio models, and other models dropping every single day. And the possibilities for those who know how to use those models are endless. If you clicked on this video, it means you're looking to learn how to use those tools in order to create a motion graphic video for either your website, your software app, or any other business. If you follow the steps by the end of the video, you should be able to create one on your own with no outside help necessary. And honestly, it should be usable for ads for organic social content and anything else you want to use it for. Hi guys, my name is Omri from AI Academy and today we'll be using ChatGPT, Gemini 2.5 Flash Image or Nano Banana, Eleven Labs and Hicksfield AI in order to create our motion graphic video. Now in order to assemble everything together, I just use CapCut, but you can use any other software as well. So the first thing we want to do is go over to ChatGPT. You can also use Gemini for this. I just use ChatGPT for my chats. But first thing we do is go over to ChatGPT and basically basically tell it that it's our producer for the video. So I pretty much said you are my producer for Hooked AI launch video. Hooked AI is my startup. Speaking of Hooked AI, if you want to generate your thumbnails with AI instead of paying a thumbnail designer, this is what it's for. So hookedai.com. But anyways, let's get back into it. So yeah, basically telling the chat that this will be our SaaS launch video with motion graphics. The way I'm going to create it is fully with AI. So you're giving it context on how you're going to make the video. I'll be using a couple of AI tools. The tools I'll be using are Gemini 2.5 flash image. So now a banana and Hiluo's video model. So this is Hiluo Minimax and we're using it in Higgs field. Next thing I said is basically the way this works is that I have to generate a starting frame and an ending frame for each shot and then upload it to the video model using the first frame and the last frame of the shot. And then I'll generate the thing in between. What I need you to do is come up with all the scenes for the video and the prompts of the first frame of each scene and the last frame of each scene and the prompt for the video generation using the starting and ending frame of each scene that you generate. Let me know if that makes sense or if you have any questions before you start. So I always like to add this right here before I do anything that's a big project in ChatGPT because then it can ask me a bunch of questions before it starts with its task. You can pause here if you want to read this, but basically here it confirms that it understands what I want it to do. And then it asks some specific questions about what my video output should look like. So is it 60 second slash launch video with six to eight key scenes or just the 30 second one with three to four high impact shots? It's asking about the tone and styles. So either Apple style or futuristic and more edgy. I chose kind of futuristic style. When it comes to branding, it's asking me if I want it to use our actual user interface for Hooked or any logos and things like that. And then for our end scene, it's asking if we want to have any call to action. So this is where you get users to actually sign up for your product or purchase your product. And basically here I answered all of its questions. You can pause right here if you want to read my prompt. And I sent in my logo as well. And if you do pause right here, you can actually see that my prompts are basically just having a conversation with ChatGPT about the video. But now since it understands what we want to do, it basically starts working on it. So it comes up with our scripts. So we have our actual voiceover line right here, right here, right here for each one of the scenes. And then we have our starting frame prompt, our ending frame prompt and our video prompt. So these are for Nano Banana, the starting and end frames. And this is for the Higgs field video. Now, once we have all of these, we can go on to Nano Banana to generate our images. Now, as you can see, I had a couple of failed attempts with Nano Banana, and this happens because AI, never perfect. So I went back to ChatGPT and basically told it, this is what the attempts look like. Is this what you had in mind? And it said yes, but then I asked it to rewrite the prompts and make them more detailed. So more detailed prompts means more detailed image generation. So I do highly recommend that you guys ask for more detailed prompts. If your prompts seem a little bit too short for the images, just ask for more detailed ones and it'll come up with it. But now that we have our super detailed prompts, we went to Gemini to generate our images. And our first shot is a white shot of a futuristic stylized YouTube page, rows of thumbnails and a grid, mostly blurred into the background, yada, yada, yada. This is basically just copy pasted the prompt from ChatGPT and it came up with this. And then I wanted to have it be in a 16 by nine aspect ratio since this is a widescreen video. So we need it to be a landscape image and I wanted it to resemble YouTube a little bit more. So I dropped in a screenshot from YouTube and it generated a new image for me. And then I saved it. So this is our first scene image. Now with Nano Banana, you're going to have an issue with the aspect ratio. This is a known thing, but I have the fix for you. If it gives you a weird aspect ratio and not the one that you wanted, just drop in an image, either of a blank screen or anything that you want that's related to your actual image generation. But make sure the input image is the aspect ratio that you wanted in, and then it'll just mimic that aspect ratio. So yeah, here we have our first screen. Then we just pasted our next prompt. Basically I said, 
said, cool, now let's make it this. So this is our second prompt for the image. So this is our first image. This is our second image. And what we're doing is basically creating a video from this frame to this frame. So this is the end frame for the first scene. And this is the starting frame for the first scene. And since this is the end frame for the first scene, it's also going to be the first frame of the second scene to make it seem like the video just flows through. And now that we have that picture, again, same process, just telling it to maintain the aspect ratio and pasting this image in to make sure it follows the same aspect ratio. You're going to have trouble with this if you don't follow this. So make sure you pay attention, paste an image with the same aspect ratio as the output that you're looking for. And yeah, just pasting in the next prompt and getting our next frame. So this is the third frame from Nano Banana and it's the last frame of the second scene and the first frame of the third scene. I know it can get confusing. You'll figure it out once you see the edited process. And yeah, pretty much doing the same thing for all the other images. As you can see, I have a bunch of different trials here, getting different results from different chats with Gemini and Nano Banana until I find the one I like. And once we have all the images for all of our scenes, we want to go over to Higgsfield. Now, if you don't know of Higgsfield, this is one of my favorite platforms to use in order to generate videos, images, and a bunch of different things like that. And with a Higgsfield account, you can actually have unlimited generations on Nano Banana for a year if you buy a plan and they have a ton more different models. As you can see, there's some pretty crazy stuff on here. Their pricings are actually pretty fair. They have a basic plan for $9 a month. That's nothing when it comes to this stuff. I currently have the pro plan. So I get 600 credits a month, three concurrent generations, sole character creations, access to all the video models, image editing features, image and video upscaling features, start an end frame control, which is what we need for today. But I believe you might be able to actually not get this plan and still do the things we're doing today because it does have access to the Hiluo O2 model, which is what we need. And I think this is the best plan. This is the one I'm on. I've been on it for a couple months now and no complaints here. And then if you want some overkill stuff, they have their ultimate plan and their creator plan, which give you access to a ton of stuff. But I'm not going to go into detail in that because we don't need that for today. But yeah, if you want to sign up for Higgsfield, we have a link in the description. So sign up through that and keep following along. Once we're into Higgsfield, what we want to go do is go to Minimax Hiluo O2. Click right here. And as you can see, I have all my generations that I already made. But basically what we want to do is open up our first frame. So this is the first frame from the video from Nano Banana. You can see right here, this is the first frame and this is the second frame. But basically those frames, what we want to do is just put them here, put our first frame there and put our second frame here. And then what we want to do is go back to our chat GPT chat and go to our scene and then just copy the prompt for the video prompt. Then what we want to do is paste it right here and then generate our video. So this is what it came up with for me. But this is just one scene. So it starts off with this YouTube. Our narration is going to be talking about YouTube and then it goes to thumbnails. So this is part of what the narration is going to be talking about. Then we have our next scene. So it goes from that screenshot, the thumbnail one into the next screenshot right here of the broken dashboard. But yeah, that was our second scene. Then we have our third scene right here, switching some AI interfaces and then our logo with the generate thumbnail. But yeah, sometimes the spelling will be just how you want it, just like right here. It has our logo perfectly created based on our input images of the last frame. And this is our prompt right here. And yeah, basically just repeating the process over and over again until you get something that you like. So this scene, I actually did not like it. As you can see, there is some misspellings right here. And I don't like the way it fades out with all the thumbnails getting jumbled up. So I just regenerated this one later on. But this is the scene that's supposed to go after that turning into my logo, super smooth, super clean animations with the floating thumbnails. And then yeah, as you can see, I just regenerated it and just did it with no prompt. Sometimes with no prompts, things will go a lot smoother. And yeah, this is the last scene. So we have our text, the last thumbnail tool you'll ever need. Try it for free at hook-ai.com. So this is our CTA that we mentioned earlier in our ChatGPT chat. Cool. So now that we have all that done, what you want to do is go on to CapCut and upload all of your files right here. Now, once you have all of them uploaded, what you want to do is take them and just put them onto your timeline. So just select all of them like this and then just drag them onto the timeline. I'm not going to do that right now because I already made the video, but I just want to show you. So once you have your project set up with everything on your timeline, we'll pause right here and move over to 11 labs. Now, 11 labs is a tool for voiceovers. If you're using AI tools, you've probably been targeted by one of their ads. I see them everywhere. I use them very often. So I guess it makes sense why they can afford all the ads because everybody's using them and they pretty much have the best voice models out there. So what we want to do now is either go to voice design or just choose one of their default voices. And yeah, after you sign up, just go to your text to speech right here with a select voices. I chose Brian. You don't have to choose Brian. I just find that Brian is a 
good voice for commercials and things like that. And all you have to do is just go back to your chat and copy paste the voiceover text right here onto this part of the UI right here. And just make sure that everything is in one paragraph and flows correctly when it comes to reading it out loud. So this is all from our chat GPT chat that we did in the beginning of the video. And what we want to do is just paste it in here and then we'll generate the speech. And once we have our speech generated, it'll look like On this. YouTube, thumbnails decide if viewers click or scroll past, but making the perfect thumbnail takes hours. But yeah, this is basically what it sounds like. We have a professional sounding voiceover just using AI. So what we want to do now is just download it and go back to our CapCut project and basically click on our import. You can, if you have a different editing software, you can just upload it same way you would in any editing software and then just add our voiceover. A lot of the times I'll do a bunch of different takes for the voiceovers and a couple different takes for the images and the video generations until I find the ones that I like. And what we want to do now now your timeline will look a little bit different because all your scenes will actually be the same size. So as you can see, for some reason, I'll explain why my scenes are one is super big and then one is small and I have all my cuts made right here and different speeds. Now, the reason being is because once we have our voiceover, it is a certain length and our clips are all six seconds. So as you can see right here in our Hiluo Minimax generation, we have a resolution at 1080p and the duration at six seconds. Now you don't have to use six seconds. You could also do 10 seconds, but pretty much our goal is to make sure that our final video and our final voiceover is matching. So yeah, since all your clips are the same size and the same speed and the same length, what you want to do is after you have your voiceover is just scroll through it and play out the video with the voiceover and figure out which frame matches which part of the voiceover. So here is the YouTube one. I'll just play out my video on YouTube. Thumbnails decide if viewers click. So as you can see, when he starts saying thumbnails, I timed it so the thumbnails show up. And the way I do it is basically by splitting up the clips that I like and the parts of the clips that I like also don't delete any parts of any clips because then the video will not be smooth. So just keep everything, but just split them up into different sections. So for example, this clip, the first one with the thumbnails is just this one. So all I did is just made it 1.1 times speed. So the timing with the thumbnails narration is lined up. Then we have our next clip. We have our parts where it glitches and breaks and then goes back to the negative YouTube dashboard with thumbnails that a human makes. So the second the narration says create clickable thumbnails, I timed it. So we have our glitching into creating thumbnails and then moving over to our hooked AI thumbnail input. Now, because all of our clips are in order from our first frame to the second frame, this is from Nano Banana, first frame, second frame for Nano Banana, third frame from Nano Banana is this one right here. So this is the last part of the second scene. As you could see, if we play it out, it just smoothly transitions between or another. Scroll past, but making the perfect thumbnail takes hours and still fails to get clicks. What if you could create clickable thumbnails instantly? Hooked AI turns your ideas into professional thumbnails in seconds. Built for creators who want more clicks, more growth, more impact. More clicks start with better thumbnails. Hooked AI, the last thumbnail tool you'll ever need. Start today at hookedai.com. But yeah, pretty much through the entire timeline, I have different parts of each clip in different speeds. And also another thing that happens is sometimes with the aspect ratios of the images from the generation in Nano Banana, it might be a little bit off. So what I would do is take the parts that are sticking out. Let's say, for example, in this part of the video, I had a little black line sticking on both sides. So what I'll do is just cut where that part is, add a keyframe into here, and then just size the video differently. So the scale is at 110. And what you got to do is make sure that this frame right here matches with the frame in the video before it and the video after it. So just make sure the sizing is good using keyframes. But yeah, once you're done with your video, this took me about 15 minutes, 10 minutes. You just want to press export, download it onto your folders or finder if you're using Mac. And what we want to do before we post this, this is super important, go back to Higgsfield. Now, the reason why we go back to Higgsfield is in order to upscale our video because we have a lot of AI processing and different things like that. It tends to lose quality. So what we want to do is go here to video and click video upscale. This is using the Topaz Labs upscaler, I believe. And this is just their example. This is a frame from 
from it, one of their videos or images. And then this is what it looks like after the upscale. But yeah, you can tell the difference between the original video and the upscaled video. You can even tell with the little star on the right side. Basically my settings were just 4K on their basic upscale. Look at the generate versus this night and day difference when it comes to quality. So make sure you go on this video upscaler and upscale your video. I'll do a quick example of my settings just to make sure you guys get this. And this is the last step. So make sure you stick around. So my settings were basically 4K and I clicked advanced settings using their default model right here. And just everything is on auto and just click upscale and see what it does. If you like it, use it. If you don't change the settings, run it again. It doesn't cost you anything. And yeah, this is pretty much all the steps you need. Now, please, 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 if you end up doing this, share below in the comments. I want to see what you guys end up doing. I haven't really seen anybody talk about this being a possibility. So I want to see everyone else's results if you try this out. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the video, make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.